Hey there, welcome to the Influential Christian Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Francine Sinclair. I've been around the block in the entrepreneurial world, creating and repurposing social media content for experts and CEOs. I know firsthand how it can feel lonely, especially when you're mixing your Christian faith into your business life. So I figured, why should we go it alone? Who said that faith and business can't mix? And that's where this podcast comes in. Join me as we meet influential Christian entrepreneurs who are showing us how to blend business and faith in a way that works. We're here to prove that you can express your faith without compromising your business success. On the Influential Christian Entrepreneur, you're not just listening, you're part of the gang. So let's start this journey together. Welcome to the Influential Christian Entrepreneur Podcast, where we uncover the inspiring stories and strategies of successful Christian entrepreneurs. In today's episode, we have the pleasure of interviewing Brian Woodleaf, who is a husband and a father of three, a digital marketing professional as well. He graduated from East Carolina University with a BFA in design and illustration. He's consistently worked in his chosen field for 15 plus years, earning awards and recognition in various roles as a designer, illustrator, web developer, and email automation specialist. Brian has worked for the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, as well as a number of design agencies and in-house marketing teams during his career. He started on his in his own digital marketing firm in 2020 and has been successfully serving clients of all sizes, helping them craft their visual brand and developing their marketing message to grow their business. Most recently, he became a StoryBrand certified guide to continually add to his knowledge in the field and aid his ability to serve his clients. Thanks for being here, Brian. How are you? I'm great, Francine. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, taking the time to sit with me here today. As you know, I am on a quest, (laughs) you know, to discover what is what what is that everybody does you know i consider myself you know a new christian and um i always wondered why don't i see other christians out there like why aren't they front and center i was inspired to start this podcast somehow it didn't come from me it was just an inspiration the title everything and what i was supposed to be asking as well so I wanted to first start and ask you, like, were you always a Christian or did you become a Christian? Can you tell me about that? I think I would have uh, said from a very, very early age that I was a Christian. But, you know, that's that's somewhat indicative of being in the South where uh, I think, you know, cultural Christianity is kind of a, you know, a general thing, especially, you know, when I was young, when I, when I was born, it, it definitely was much more so maybe even than than currently. But, um, but I, it was quickly evident uh, in college as I was starting to rub up against some other Christians um, that maybe there was something missing um, in, in my life. And I, I really um, kind of through the ministry of Campus Crusade, which was on the college campus that I went to, um, meeting some of those and being discipled by uh, a few people involved in that ministry. It became evident that I never really uh, had that beginning point where I, I, I actively, you know, sought the Lord, uh, chose to, um, you know, put Him on the the throne of my life uh, rather than me, and and begin that relationship, which is really key. Um, so I, I would say that's really where my my faith journey uh, truly started. So your faith journey truly started in college when you made the conscious decision of following Christ. Whereas, yeah, myself included, I, I, I was baptized in the Catholic church. I went to church with my grandmother on Sundays and then I kind of veered away in my teens, but I don't consider that I actually became a Christian until I made that conscious decision and started reading the Bible and doing the best that I could. So was that kind of how it was for you when you were in college and you made the decision and started moving in that direction? Yeah, I count that as the the, the true beginning. Um, but, you know, the seeds came well before that. You know, I, I definitely recall uh, being an artist, just being fascinated with my, you know, God's creation. 
and just looking around, even as a very, very young person, realizing, okay, this doesn't just happen. And, and, and I think that, you know, that, that materialized in lots of different ways as I grew up. And then, you know, I had some really good influences in my life. Uh, me and my sister would often go to my grandmother's uh, house and stay for a week during the summers, you know, when we grow up. And uh, my uh, grandmother on my mother's side would uh, always have a devotional um, before we went to bed. And she would read directly from the scriptures. Now, I had not really no idea what she was talking about at the time. And I certainly had no context for, you know, the Bible at that, at that point in my life. But it planted the seeds of, okay, you know, this is important. You know, God has a, a word out there. And it's, it's not just for nothing. It's, it's for us to know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and we can know him through that word. And so that, that kind of was seeds planted. And in my mind that I think came to fruition there in college and, you know, has continued, um, you know, from that point on. Mm -hmm. And so did you, when you were in college, was it completely, a completely different environment than how college is today? Because I feel like today, um, being a Christian in college could be rather unpopular. (laughs) Was it popular back when you were in college as well? Because I was not, you know, I can't remember when I was in college if I didn't call myself a Christian. So I don't know. But having grown up in Puerto Rico, where I guess is a predominantly Christian, we call it a country, but that was part of the United States, that uh, it, w- it wasn't really something that we thought about. But it was, was it like, since you're kind of like my same generation, I figure, was it, were you like um, feeling a little bit out of place in college or was it just easy smoothing while you were, I mean, easy sailing while you were in college? Well, I, yeah, I, I guess that, that may be the best way to answer that is kind of twofold. Like, um, I, I went to what was always considered uh, a notorious kind of party school um, as far as like of the schools within, uh, it was a state school that I went to in North Carolina. Um, so yeah, I think Christianity was, was definitely not uh, the school was not known for <laughs> for it uh, by any means, um, but uh, you know I had a good upbringing. Uh, you know there was a lot of things, a lot of trappings of Christianity that I felt like uh, was kind of evident in my life. Um, you know I, I really was not a partier per se, and I, I really wasn't even looking forward to that aspect of the school because I knew it was kind of known for that. And uh, I really just was not interested in being a part of that lifestyle, um, and and that and that quickly became the case. Um, at, you know, during you know the early part of my first year, I was definitely looking for something other than that scene to be a part of, and I was really glad that God kind of met me in that, um, putting me together with uh, what would eventually be a, a Christian roommate who uh, was already looking to get involved in some of the parachurch organizations on campus, which I didn't even know that was such a thing. Um, but I kind of followed along and uh, I was so glad that I did because I met some really amazing people, even people within the art community, which is my area of major and study. Uh, there was a, a real strong contingency of believers who were artists and graphic designers uh, like, like I was studying. And so that became just a a fantastic um, experience for me all the way around. Like I didn't have to separate um, my faith from, you know, you know, what it is that I, my chosen vocation. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's just kind of continued to compound, you know, even throughout my career and now as a a solopreneur and businessman. So you found your community, you found your support system early and, and you never had that dramatic where I fell completely oops out of um, my faith and then I came back something shocking happened and then I came back so yours was kind of like you know no no you didn't ruffle any feathers along the way it was pretty smooth for you now when it comes to in the world of business one thing that I noticed is that um, or one thing that I was always told was to never mix politics or faith in business because it's bad for business. And and people will tell you, like, don't mix your beliefs into business because that will turn other people off. You will lose clients who may not think like you. You will offend somebody. Um, it's never good to 
push your beliefs on other people. And my question is, do you think from your personal perspective, is it okay to mix your faith and business? We, you and I both are solopreneurs. So we're thinking about maybe the online space, but even if somebody has like a brick and mortar and they're the CEO of the company, do you think it's okay to mix your faith with business? I think faith is, is how you live your life. It's, it's not a compartmentalized thing as far as I'm concerned. So to me, it's like, I can't separate that faith from, you know, who I am and that, that feeds into my business. And as far as how forward facing that is, you know, that's, that's a case by case um, basis. Like, I've, I've been in the room with, with people, uh, that, you know, are my clients that are very open and receptive. And we've, we've, uh, our conversations have, you know, migrated to things of faith and spirituality. And I've, I've prayed with clients and, and people that I've networked, uh, and have found some true, really amazing brothers and sisters in Christ out there in the work world, most of which I've never been in the same room with. It's all been virtual, but technology just, connects us in so many new and exciting ways now. And, and I, I think that can, you can use that as a way to, you know, encourage your own faith, but then also the faith of others. Right. You, so you do it in a subtle way and it's not necessarily f- public facing. What I'm trying to get at is that everybody has their own style um, of how they communicate their faith based on their personality, based on their business. Um, and that we don't all have to be front and center, uh, you know, maybe your style to have scripture on all your social media posts, but the way that you do it is you leave that, you let the other person kind of lead the way if they want to hear more about that from you is, am I right? Yeah, to me, it's like I, I try to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit because I really feel like the, the Holy Spirit's always living and active and uh, guiding us in those conversations. You know, sometimes I felt like, you know, I, there, there are opportunities within conversations with clients where I just kind of try to open that door. And, you know, it, it, it's rare that I do that in any kind of like, you know, very he- heavy handed way. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it, it's nice whenever I can be salt and light and encourage people in in that way. And, Mm -hmm. you know, everyone's coming at faith from, you know, a different perspective and, you know, with different backgrounds. Uh, So it's really just trying to be there and accessible and meeting people where they are in their faith journey, wherever that happens to be. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, because I feel like, and part of the reason why I was so uh, like, I did not want to come out publicly as being a Christian for two years. Um, because I felt like Christians, we got a bad name. Like somehow we develop a bad name. I was that person on the other side where as soon as you said something about like God or Jesus, I'm like, oops, this person's going to try to recruit me or, you know, I'm going to try to take me to their church. And I don't know where I was. I think it was rooted in, in a bad experience that I had, um, where I joined this church and it felt very much very heavy handed, very pushy, very churchy. Like you need to go out there and meet strangers and, and talk to them about the Bible and all that kind of stuff. And that really like turned me off. So have we, do you feel like, you know, we have gotten a bad rap Christians and that's why people, we have to probably not be churchy and pushy when it comes to that. What do you think? I think that maybe is, Somewhat peculiar uh, to America um, because, you know, we have this tradition of, you know, being one nation under God. You know, there's there's definitely um, that in our background. And, and, you know, we have an enemy very much uh, in the spiritual realm and who's pushing back actively against that and has done a great job in undermining a lot of that tradition and convincing people that, you know, they, they, they should turn away from that. Uh, so I, I kind of couch that in, in that because, you know, there, there is a battlefield and, you know, we have to be active in that, uh, realizing that, you know, we can't be passive because uh, the enemy is not passive. He's actively recruiting. And so whether you think you're being pushy on, you know, the side of God, Jesus, <laughs> what I would say is the forces of good, um, then 
But just realize that the enemy is very much active and recruiting on the opposite side of the, of that same fence. And so I and feel he like is pushing. Any, he's all over the place. And it's it's very palpable today. You know, I just within my own lifetime, I feel like I've seen an incredible darkening of the culture around me. Yes. Uh, I don't want to see that, you know, trajectory continue. You know, I want to be a force for light um, in a darkening world. Yeah, but what's what's great is that I feel like the light shines brightest in the dark. And so it really doesn't take a lot to, you know, be that force uh, on, on the opposite side of the fence or the uh, conversation. So, right. yeah, I, right. I think we have plenty of reasons to uh, feel emboldened to share our faith um, because, honestly, this is what the world needs. Um, you know, they need to hear this. They're desperate for it, whether they realize it or not. So, yeah. Right, right. So I Is feel that like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good answer because I feel like now that I'm on the other side of the fence, I feel like Christians, we may be a little bit too passive. I just wrote a post about that today. We, we have been too passive. And I feel like, like you say, the increasing darkness, um, I've seen mockery of God and Jesus Christ, like, like literal mockery, you know, memes and making fun of Jesus and saying things about Jesus that, I mean, would have been, even, even when I was in the secular world, I would have considered extremely offensive. Right. And nobody says anything, you know, people laugh and Christians, we do nothing about it. I'm talking about specifically on like social media. So I feel like we are a little bit too passive. We, we, but at the same time, we probably should find a better approach than, than being forceful However, we shouldn't become complacent and just have that spirit of fear that God told us not to have, you know, and be afraid that if we speak out and, and, and come out as Christians and, and, and tell our stories and give our testimony that we are going to not pay our bills, because that's where I was for a while. Like, <laughs> I don't want to say anything because I'm not going to have a business like people will hate me. And it's true. You will get a lot of backlash for that. But it's because of what you said, the increasing darkness that uh, I never used to see that before. I don't know, because you're also in, in the area of digital marketing. So I'm sure you're out there on social media a lot or whatever. And I don't know if you've noticed on social media, particularly how it's increasingly dark, even in like music, for example, and, and movies. It, it, it's astonishing what's going on today. And I feel like Christians... We're just kind of taking a back seat, and I don't know if I'm seeing it the right way or not. Yeah, there's certainly a danger because the enemy wants us to shut up. In fact, that's what we hear consistently from you know the other side. Is, you know, shut up. Even though we have what we say uh, it is what people need. I mean, it, it it is the source of true life. So why would we not want to shout that from the the rooftops? Especially when we see so so many people making really just tragic uh, decisions uh, in regards to their life um, purely because they've been deceived so badly by the culture around them, uh, being told that good is bad and, and bad is good. And that's very scriptural. I mean, God has told us that this is going to happen. So he's prepared us. And so we need to be preparing ourselves. You know, how, how can we stand up against that uh, in, in, you know, inappropriate ways, I, I would say. Right, right. And what's really pushed me to start speaking out was as more, as I read the Bible more and started to pray more, you become convicted. You, you feel, you, you gain that courage to go out there and, and speak the truth. And sometimes it feels scary, but I had to come to the point where I felt that the only opinion I care about is that of Jesus Christ. So what my fellow man and people out there on the internet and strangers, usually that I don't even know. And I used to care so much about everybody's opinion. And most of these people I don't even know, although I love them as well, because I have to, you know, I want to mirror Christ and love everyone. I really have to care more about Jesus Christ's opinion. And since I decided that I was going to follow him, um, I knew that it's going to come along with some sacrifice as well. So I think that, uh, that if we all see it, uh, if we all think about how can we impact other people through our business in our own way, in our own style, what can we do? 
and allow the Holy Spirit to inspire us. For for example, this podcast was inspiration. Then then I think we can um, bring more people to work to God's kingdom for sure. Do you agree with that? <laughs> All right. I so appreciate what you're doing, Francine. I, I so agree with what you said earlier. You know, we're given a spirit, you know, that pushes against fear. We have no reason to fear. We, we know what happens in the end. And that's, uh, you know, it, it's called the gospel for a reason, you know, because that literally means good news. Uh, it's good news because, you know, um, eternal separation from God is the worst thing that you could ever experience on the other side of this life. Yes. Um, but the promise that you, you can spend eternity with God, I mean, what better news? Uh, and why would you not want to find some way in which to share that? And you're, you're so right. I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, it's an audience of uh, one that I'm really trying to, to please, and that's God himself. So I conduct myself with that in mind, Absolutely. moment by moment. Lord willing. Lord willing. Absolutely. You just have to get to that point. So how would you are a digital marketer extraordinaire. I know that you're mostly in the illustration and the design, which I love. Like I love design and illustration. So how can people contact you if they were wanting to talk to you about your services? I would always encourage, you know, if you're on uh, social channels, especially LinkedIn, I'm very active there. My the name of my business is Square Knot Marketing. My website is Square Knot. That's K N O T. You know, like as in I wrote not uh-huh. uh, dot marketing. So it's not a dot com. It's a Square Knot dot marketing. Oh, dot and marketing! I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> dot marketing. <laughs> it's, it's kind of fun these new extensions. You yeah. Know, because obviously, you know what dot coms. You know they'll they'll eventually run out, right? Yeah. We need alternatives and options. So some of them are kind of fun. And I, I actually try to encourage some of my clients even to consider getting some of the newer domain uh, name extensions. But that's, you know, a whole other conversation. A whole other conversation. I, I love helping people with their, their branding, their, especially on the visual side, and then, you know, help with uh, web development as well, creating beautiful websites. So, yeah, I would love to talk with anyone that uh, has needs in those areas. Who's your, um, what are the, ty- I know you work with businesses of all sizes. Is there a, a specific type of business that uh, is more, more it, uh, of a fit for you? I love anyone, especially personal brands that are looking to really brand themselves and their expertise online or relaunch it if they're really trying to level up what they're doing. And that's for businesses as well. I, I love any kind of business that has a lot of creativity at the, at the core of it. Like I have uh, some restaurant clients that I really enjoy doing work for because there's a lot of just fun kind of design work involved there, um, promoting food and, you know, all things. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, within that uh, genre or, or vertical. So, but at the end of the day, I really like forging uh, close relationships with my clients. I like building trust with the decision makers for the marketing efforts um, so that over time, you know, there's, there's kind of a synergy there built. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you for coming on uh, today, um, Brian, for sharing your heart and sharing, you know, what's on your mind. You know, every, I know that, you know, people resonate with different stories, right? And that's why I always try to have a variety of different points of view of the same subject, you know, on this podcast. So I want to thank you for introducing me to so many wonderful Christian entrepreneurs as well. You filled up my podcast for like an entire month. (laughs) Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for listening to the Influential Christian Entrepreneur. We will be back next week with another episode. Thank you so much. Bye. If you're a Christian business leader or executive, I invite you to work with me to create a faith-driven personal brand on LinkedIn that will empower you to navigate the intersection between faith and business. Feel free to contact me directly at hello at francinesinclair.com.
I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening today. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow me, Francine Sinclair, on Facebook or LinkedIn. See you next week for a new episode.